overflows vedanta and quantum physics reality or truth has two aspects consciousness and embodiments consciousness is one but embodiments are myriad consciousness is one but embodiments are myriad consciousness is both within and without as cosmic expanse inner and outer dimensions are two aspects of one reality that we know as brahman or atman consciousness is inner sun of awakening it operates from within when both inner and outer aspects are merged into one another only then consciousness can begin the process of transformation this state we call as enlightenment sage kanath in 600 bc viewed reality as two triangles one is the shakti triangle that consists of substance dravya motion karma and properties guna and the other is shiva triangle shiva triangle consisting of universal samanya vishesh particular to an individual who is interacting with the observer and observed and samanvay antarnihit these two triangles are placed in a position that they work in harmony with one another to make you beyond the duality of male and female this is most incredible and as advanced as it can be and this is something which is guiding the evolution of such ideas consciousness is inner dimension of reality and embodiment is the outer manifestation all thoughts messages etc are embodiments emerging out when consciousness operates through the mind and sense organs as instrument being an instrument is more important after enlightenment one realizes the the oneness of inner and outer then he simply acts as an instrument he is aware of that things are happening through him but he is not doing the same applies to the astral travel and many other things therefore both work in harmony with one another for the process of transformation therefore the development of human consciousness is blend of science and sanskriti this is the aspect of modern physics or more precisely quantum physics as well and how to change the gear and change direction this systematic blend is the essence of sanatan way of life the eternal way of life quantum physics helps to understand this both consciousness and embodiments are deeply connected to one another compare and contrast something with other things is one way of understanding compare and contrast with other things is one way of understanding thus you have two universal ways to understand reality first is modern mainstream way of science this sees reality as consisting of objects and relationship between these objects or basically as things and their evolution remember we are also objects better indeed biological objects as sanatan way of life sees it we are biological objects until we attain 
inner and outer oneness or enlightenment, we simply remain as biological objects. This is modern viewpoint of the body. The other way is that of Hinduism. It sees reality as objects and things and process of their evolution, objects and things. Furthermore, it sees as consciousness as well. You are objects, things and consciousness. However, consciousness remains unmanifest or hidden behind the veil created by objects, things and sense perception. Sense perception create a veil because of that consciousness does not manifest in its total splendor and glory. Thus there are two sides of reality as conceived in Hinduism. These are things and consciousness. Both are complementary aspects of reality, things and consciousness. In things we include even the sense perceptions, mind and consciousness that acts behind these and remains hidden. Both are complementary aspects of reality and in fact it is interesting to note that this is also consistent with most advanced science, the quantum mechanics. Outside light comes from the sun during the daytime and during nighttime it comes from the moon that reflects the light of the sun. Consciousness is inner. It is manifestation of inner sun of awakening. It is at the basis of all physical and biological sciences or semiconductor or integrated circuits and so on. According to Irving Schrodinger, an Austrian Vedanti who was a physicist as well, the central idea of quantum mechanism comes to him from the Upanishadic Mahavakya, great sentence, I am Atman Brahm. I am Atman Brahm. Meaning this Atman, which is ourselves in some mysterious way, mirrors the entire cosmos. You are micro. That's why when you sit in meditation and you can envision things. This is how the reality has been revealed as Holy Quran to Hazrat Mahapagambar or Bhagavad Gita and other Purans to Veda Vyas. He sat in meditation. He envisioned something, saw something and that he penned it. That became the scriptures. This Atman which is ourselves, which is ourselves in some mysterious way, mis mirrors the entire cosmos. That's why when you sit in meditation and you are commune with the existence, then many visions happen to some of us. Seekers who are around within the energy field, they envision such things. This cosmos is ever-expanding consciousness or Brahm. In some ways, the most subtle physical aspect or a quantum state. This is the superposition of all possibilities and you know as Atman, Brahma, equivalence of your will. And you know as Atman, Brahma, equivalence of your will. And this is the central idea and other central idea of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is that you interact with it. When you interact with it, 
you are able to access only one of the different possibilities that exist and so physics itself is consistent. This is the central idea and other central ideas of quantum mechanics is that when you interact with it, you are able to access only one of all the different possibilities. There are many possibilities. You become very certain this is the only possibility that will work with that seeker. So you are sure about it. There is no uncertainty when you give a technique to a seeker. Even the greatest physicist except Vedanta and Vedanta is the heart of analytical Hinduism if you will. Vedanta is the heart of analytical Hinduism if you will. But in the mainstream in policy making departments, in the hallways or the realm of academia and in the social sciences, quantum mechanics is not yet understood. There are, in the spiritual field even, there are many who do not understand or acknowledge the significance of quantum mechanics but it is at the very core. They still see things in terms of individual and as of as objects who are interacting with the other. These people, the, the mainstream, the policy making departments, the hallways or the realm of academia and in the social sciences, quantum mechanics is not understood. They still see things in terms of individuals and as up as objects who are interacting with each other. So maybe we could call it 19th century physics. The first thing is that reality has two aspects, consciousness and embodiments which is which in the words of Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita that you see body as Atman the soul. Atma is consciousness and it is the same Atma which dwells in each one of us. There is oneness we are not aliens nor as a strangers join. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. When this comes, there comes a totally a different kind of a humanity developed. Transformation happens. The same life force flows in each one of us. Realization of this is awakening or enlightenment. Enough for now.